Like, y'all just got a snapshot of how Americans really feel. We gave the people a voice. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most controversial songs ever. The boy must have been pretty messed up before he ever heard an Aussie record. And uh, I mean, I can't help that, you know. For this list, we'll be looking at infamous tracks that attracted negative attention or public outcry at the time of their release. Did we leave any out? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. It's not who I claim to be And who you thought I was Number 10. Blurred Lines Robin Thicke featuring T.I. and Pharrell Williams This single from Robin Thicke was controversial right from the jump thanks to a scandalous music video. An uncensored version was once removed from YouTube because it featured women bearing parts of their bodies. As an added layer of frustration for viewers, the lyrics to Blurred Lines were seen as sexist and misogynistic. You, a married 37-year-old, just performed a song about coercive sexual advances. If all that wasn't bad enough, there was controversy behind the actual composition of the song. I did not go in the studio with the intention of making anything to feel like, uh, to sound like Marvin Gaye. The estate of Marvin Gaye argued that Blurred Lines shared too many similarities to the Soul Legends track, Gotta Give It Up. After Thicke and Williams were hit with a copyright infringement ruling, Gay was listed as a songwriter for the 2013 single. There was seemingly no aspect of Blurred Lines that didn't attract controversy. There's no comparison between the minor bluesy chords he was playing and my major bluesy chords, and that's very plain to see for Major bluegrassy. Major bluegrassy chords. Very big difference, okay. boss. Number 9. Kim, Eminem. Rapper Eminem has a history of releasing hardcore lyrics that turned some heads. Come on, look away for a ride, bitch! No! Sit up front! We can't just leave Haley alone, what if she wakes up? He certainly held true to that tendency at the turn of the millennium with two very high-profile hits. With Stan, Eminem was criticized for lyrics that seemed to be anti-gay. I hope you get this, man. Hit me back. Just a chat. Truly yours. Your biggest fan. This is Stan. But the bigger controversy came with Kim. During this track, Eminem expressed his dark feelings about his wife with graphic lyrics that end with him taking her life. Don't make me wake this baby. She don't need to see what I'm about to do. Quit crying, bitch. Why you always make me shout at you? It's the grim nature and violence of Kim that made it shocking then and now. Eminem's committed delivery gradually gains steam and energy until it sounds as if the rapper has fully given himself up to the imaginary scenario. It can be truly chilling to listen to. No one can hear you. Now shut the f up and get what's coming to you. Number eight, The Pill, Loretta Lynn. The story of Loretta Lynn and her song The Pill came from one of country's most beloved ambassadors. However, the track still stirred up a bit of drama. You and me, and I me, when I was your girl. After becoming a mother, Lynn's The Pill celebrated the fact that birth control allowed women to choose when they had children. Her openness on the topic was seen as too taboo for certain fans and even a few country music stations. Despite being banned in certain places, the pill still found success in countries like Canada. Tonight's too good to be real. Oh, but daddy, don't you worry, Nana, cause mama's got the pill. To this day, several organizations and fans praise Lynn for facing backlash to talk honestly about birth control. I definitely couldn't be doing what I'm doing unless she had broken down those barriers. Number seven, Get Your Gun, Marilyn Manson. When Marilyn Manson released Get Your Gun, the message of the song was to express his anger against the person who took the life of a pro-choice doctor. While it initially received praise for its lyrics, the song would be seen in a different light. The tragedy that happened at Columbine High School five years after the song's release was linked to the song. During the media coverage, Manson's song was blamed for inspiring the violent events that occurred. 
They were people who believed the track was meant to encourage harm from the beginning. This is perhaps the sickest group ever promoted by a mainstream record company. While arguments for and against Get Your Gun rage today, it's still one of Manson's best known songs. The president was shooting bombs overseas, yet I'm a bad guy because I've, I've sang some rock and roll songs. Number six, Lemon Incest, Serge Gainsbourg and Charlotte Gainsbourg. Serge Gainsbourg was a French singer and songwriter who was immensely popular and influential and never far away from controversy. The single named after a fruit was a late period hit in his career. This duet with his daughter Charlotte practically dared audiences to listen to it without cringing. Throughout the song, the songwriter riffed on the phrase lemon zest with a song and video that was, well, anything but innocuous. His daughter's breathy delivery of the lyrics was enough to shock people. But the accompanying video was seen as pushing the envelope way too far. Today, a song and video combination like this would likely buckle under the weight of massive scrutiny. Number 5. Strange Fruit Billy Holiday There are certain moments in history that just remain captivating in just how brave they are in their defiance. Strange Fruit was a fiery denouncement of injustice that made people pay attention to the racially motivated violence perpetrated against Thomas Shipp and Abram Smith. Southern trees bear a strange fruit. Written by Abel Mirapol, the lyrics describe the incident in graphic detail. The tragedy of the story is sung with heartbreaking beauty by Billie Holiday. This haunting combination courted controversy right from the get-go. The bulging eyes and the twisted mouth. Since Holiday's label was wary about her recording it, she had to get a brief reprieve from her contract to record it elsewhere. Holiday closed a number of sets with this powerful and stirring protest song. For the sun to rot, for the trees to drop. Number 4. Suicide Solution Ozzy Osbourne on its own, it's easy to see why the dark subject matter of this Ozzy Osbourne song would attract controversy. Although it was meant to reference a musician, the track became tied to a different tragedy. The parents of John Daniel McCollum claimed the song pushed him to take his own life four years after the song was released. No one can explain it. Uh, the only thing we know is he was listening to this music. This grieving couple even took Osborne to court for damages over the song. I feel very sad for the boy and I feel uh, terribly sad for the parents because as a parent myself, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be pretty devastated. But the court ultimately ruled that there wasn't enough evidence to support their claim. Over the years, it's likely that this Osborne track will continue to court controversy anytime it's played. Liquid, like solution as a liquid, not, like, not a way out. Number three. Darling Nikki, Prince. Hey, do you remember those parental advisory stickers that were affixed to the covers of basically every cool CD you owned? It turns out that Prince had a little something to do with that. His Darling Nikki song described more than a few explicit and mature acts performed by the subject of the title. When Tipper Gore found one of her children listening to Darling Nikki, she decided to take action. Cut the next morning. Nikki wasn't there. She helped found the Parents Music Resource Center, an organization that helped identify particularly mature albums with infamous black stickers. She took me to her castle and I just couldn't believe my eyes. This group also made sure to place Darling Nikki on their filthy 15 list of songs. It's safe to say this Prince track wasn't played often at many early PRMC meetings. Back, 
Number two, F the police, NWA. NWA's raw and realistic approach to music stood in strict contrast to the more lighthearted and party-focused rap music of their era. This particular song about officers was their most blatant and boldest call to arms. Police coming straight from the underground. Like your got it back cause I'm brown. Throughout the track, lyrics protesting against racial profiling and police violence were passionate and angry as anything hitting the radio waves at the time. The unapologetic song caused the FBI to reach out to the group with their concerns. Put in my clip, yo, and this is the sound. Yeah, something like that. And over the years, the track has faced bans and even led to some arrests. It's the song's brutal honesty and its defiance that helped make NWA pioneers and legends. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cop Killer – Body Count How does an artist know that they've truly stirred the political pot with one of their songs? Well, how about when the President of the United States weighs in? Cop Killer! All eyes seem to be on Ice-T and Body Count back in 1992. Their song had everyone from George H.W. Bush to actor Charlton Heston out in force to express their anger and resentment over the lyrics. I got my 12-gauge sawed off. I got my headlights turned off. I'm about to bust some shots off. I'm about to dust some cops off. Police unions fumed, stores pulled the album from shelves, and the song was voluntarily removed from subsequent pressings of the band's debut. The replacement track, however, said all the band needed to say in response. Freedom of speech. Can't you see, you alcoholic idiots? The more you try to suppress us, the larger we get. Yeah, Parental yeah. advisory. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. Inside my head. So I'm coming.